have been known to stop my ball <laughs> quite well in the past. Last time I was out here, there was a little fellow running around named Jockey. Not the jockey we know about. Not Norman Howard. No. But uh, that's the way he can tell when he's in stroke, is by stopping his ball. He's like, I can't stop my ball. <laughs> hey, Kim Davenport to stop his ball, as, he just wit as we just witnessed. And uh, now after game number nine, Kim Davenport trails by three games in the match, three games to six. And has successfully stopped his rock. Jay Helfert uh, brushing brushing the table a little, uh, a little bit with the with the with the towel, getting some of the chalk, whatever have you, whatever debris was on the table off the table. I get it a little damper. So the uh, balls will rack a little more solidly. <laughs> Actually. Kim Davenport doesn't want it made damper. He wants it dry out there right now because he's the guy at the table breaking the balls. And if the table plays dry, that means you got more of a chance to pocket a ball on the break. And since he trails by three games, he needs to string racks. And there isn't any better way to stringing racks than the pocketing balls on the break and then continue from that point. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want any humidity on the table right. at all. He wants it bone dry right now. And the one ball went on the side. The balls really didn't seem to open up as well as they should have, and I think that's he mainly due to what Buddy brought up, the point that uh, Jay Halper dampened uh, the cloth slightly with that towel when he wiped off the table, and which has a... Why do they do that? I've noticed several uh, tournament directors do that. Why do they do that? Well, you know, if, the ball, if you're having difficulty racking the balls, if you put a little humidity into the cloth by dampening it slightly, then the balls will then stick together when you rack them. But of course, that's and also when you break them. Yeah, yeah also <laughs> when you break them. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay, he ran into the seven, and he got in front of the uh, the four, and he's created a problem not only with the four, but with the co with the position on the three. He's quite a distance from the three. He doesn't have much of an offensive shot, and he doesn't even have much of a safety. So therefore, he's confronted with a what you might say, or you might say, a dilemma here. He doesn't have really anything appealing. That's not appealing. Uh, yeah, it is appealing, but not to to Davenport. <laughs> but at least the uh, the route to the seven doesn't seem that accessible. Route to the four, that is, doesn't seem that accessible. From the three to the four. So you tell me, how do you get it? Four nine combo. Huh. Well, look, he has a shot. Well, look at this. It's a field goal position between <laughs> the six and the seven. He and, has uh, a shot. He may play the nine right here if he has to spin his ball a little. You know, there's nothing wrong with playing the nine. Oh, oh my. He hopped that, but he hit it so poorly that the cue ball actually jumped and disappeared after <laughs> after the cue ball jumped. It hit went into the. Uh, he just hauled up and hit it hard. Pocket. He just hauled off and hit that shot hard. You know, not, not putting much thought behind the shot, and uh, that's, that's something he is uh, often guilty of. And I'm surprised it doesn't come back to burn him more often I'll than it does. i tell you something, he's playing a bulldog right now. You don't get up there and give Kimmer too many chances. He will dust you if you do. Kim's lining up the angle that he needs to have on the five to play position for the six. You know, this boy's been in the top five for the last seven, eight years. I mean, he didn't get there by not taking advantage. Okay, I think he uh, could have uh, afforded a little more of an angle, but of course we're watching it on the monitor, which is a little bit deceiving. I thought perhaps he could have went to the left a little further he, than he did. He wasn't did. happy with it. He didn't get the angle that he was. Yes, he could have gone a little further to the left than he did. And now, if you notice how hard he had to hit the five ball to force it that way. Recovered nicely. He, he'll probably play the nine on this shot with a touch of inside English to come back over for the seven in case he doesn't pocket the nine. But if he hits the nine ball too fully, but he may find himself caught on the bottom cushion. Well, if he has that, if that is there, then I don't suspicion him playing the nine. You know, if he's going to go into anything besides the side of the nine, then he shouldn't shoot it. If he's going to go into it full, he shouldn't shoot at it.
Well, that certainly wasn't the case, was it? No. <laughs> he had, uh, matter of fact, he had the other angle. Yeah. He had the angle that uh, suggested that he would hit the thin side of the nine if he shot the shot natural, and that's what he did, and he came perfectly in line for the seven. Well, I guess uh, that's the proper way of playing it. I thought that he had an angle to go to the left. Obviously, I was wrong. He just drew it straight back, and he's in good shape on the eight. All he needs to do now is pocket the eight, drawing back for the nine. He has to hit this with a stroke. I mean, you know, he, he can't just dob it. He's got to go ahead and stroke it. But it's kind of a soft draw. You just want to get back to the middle of the table, and you're okay. You don't necessarily have to get way down the table and all that. But he liked getting way down table. <laughs> well, as pure as he hit the eight ball, I don't blame him. You know, he hit the center. Would you have hit it that hard, Bill? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I don't hit balls nearly as accurately as Kim Davenport. So, uh, you, you know. play like I play. Uh, you and I, well, we, we both have, play that shot to the middle of the table. Yeah, we have similarities in our game, some similarities. But in that case, I, I definitely would have... Uh, played pocket speed on the ball, applying a little better stroke on the shot, uh, trying to... Uh, making the pocket big. Yeah, m yes, making the pocket play larger. And uh, that's just the way I play the shot because I've had too many bad experiences with that shot <laughs> when I hit it too hard. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm certainly sure a lot of our viewers out there can relate to that, right? Right. <laughs> I'm sure they can. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, six to four after game 10? Okay, no one's going to correct me, so obviously I was right. So it feels good to be right, you know? Uh, yeah, how does it feel to be right all the time? I don't know, buddy. I mean, uh, I'm sitting next to a man that may have that feeling, and not me, you know, because... It's I haven't been right one time today. <laughs> 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 Right now, Mike Siegel is napping in his room, waiting for the survivor of this contest. You probably said that right. He took a unison last night, and he wasn't fully awake for his match today. And he won at 13 to 12, and now he probably is taking another nap. Yes, he is. <laughs> he won at 13 <laughs> to 12, much to the displeasure of all the supporters that gave up a game on the wire. <laughs> Now that's a good pull break there. Yes, it is. Hey, he says, "Hey, what do you see? What do you say? I have a shot." I like the way Ken, I like the way McCready says it. Hello, <laughs> have a shot at the one. He'll say, "Hello, hello, <laughs> how you doing?" Yeah, hello. He's going forward. Now he has to go forward past the nine. Can he, can he miss the six? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. If he can miss the six, he may be able to miss the nine. If he brushes the six, or if he ah. comes straight down table like he's done, How did that's he do, ideal. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm certainly sure he's glad that. He's glad that's over. He's very close to the ball. Just a center ball. Just a little punch stroke here. You know, pop it up for a position on the three. Keeping uh, the angle on the three that'll favor the left-hand side of the three. You know, because Kim, the five's on the right. Right. If Kim were to happen to win this match, it'd make a very interesting finals because he's been very successful against Siegel the last three or four times they've played. Oh, I don't sure. know. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Did they meet in, in, in Chicago? I don't think so. Did they? I think they did. I think Siegel beat him in Chicago. Tony Ellen's in the, in the rear here, and now I'll ask Tony. What happened in that match, Tony? Siegel beat him very decisively, 13 to 3. That so right? that certainly sheds a little different light on the, uh, on the issue. It sure does.
But considering the determination of Kim Davenport. I think it's going to be a good finals. You know, it may just make him angry enough to forget about that loss and just remember the victories. <laughs> but first, Kim Davenport has to fight his way past C.J. Wiley. Right. And that's not going to be an easy task. No, no, not at all. And we don't want to put the cart before the horse, right. as we so often do. Or at least as I so often do. And the angle that he has on the six may be one that he's not particularly happy about. It may suggest that he has to go forward two rails. Or maybe just stop the ball. Or maybe just stop the ball. Sometimes it's best to just stop and take what you have. Yes, but sometimes it's better to get straight in. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> if at all possible. But that all depends he's what's at risk. Rock. Or shooting his favorite shot. I don't know which. He his stopped favorite his rock. shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he likes to shoot that shot sometimes with maximum velocity and jerk it down to the end rail. Now, the I like what he did there. He didn't stop. He drew back slightly, giving himself a more natural angle to play position for the nine. Had he stopped this ball, then he would have had to do something a little extra with the cue ball. And, you know, it, it's that finesse stroke, like you can't draw it and, it's, and you can't really force it. And but you have to hold it, or you have to get it back far enough for the nine. Sometimes you have a tendency. The way to he played that, that shot. shot. The way he played that shot meets your approval. Oh, absolutely. No, he, Kim was startled by the, the the bystander that came by and shot. Billy, you talk very loud. Your voice carries. Sound like a trombone. Well then, <laughs> Kim told him. <laughs> okay, I've been reprimanded, as we all heard. Rightfully so. I will talk into the booth. Can I talk softly if I stand away from the booth? <laughs> I'll do that. And if I get carried away, punch you. Tony, just nudge me so I can talk softer, okay? Don't forget now. Okay. This is game number 12. Kim Davenport has worked his way back into the match. He was trailing 6 to 2 and 5 to 1. But now, he has narrowed the gap to within one game of the lead, five games to six. And he has been getting pretty good action off the break, the corner ball in particular, and that's the second time the corner ball has found its way into the pocket. That's the wing ball. He needed the kiss into the, from the two into the nine. He got a kiss, but it was too lightly of a kiss. He needed to hit the uh, nine a little more squarely with the two to come up with the shot. He didn't do that. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I'm laughing at something. I just had a thought run across my mind.